We're going to combine lesson two and lesson three of world history uh, to study the Neolithic era. We're going to be talking about the agricultural revolution, Neolithic inventions, Neolithic architecture, which means how they built their buildings. And then we're going to be talking about a couple of uh, archaeological finds, the Iceman and Gobekli Tepe. All right, your objectives for this lesson. Tell how farming changed human existence forever. Tell about how human life was improved by domesticating animals. Describe megaliths and other Neolithic architecture. Describe how tools were improved and other inventions that arrived during the Neolithic period. Tell how discovery on the Austrian-Italian border added to our understanding of Neolithic life. And tell how Gobekli Tepe changed prehistory. All right, vocabulary. The Neolithic era was the late Stone Age, the time of farming, new inventions, and great building projects. Domestication is just a fancy term for taming wild animals. Agriculture is planting and growing plants. Megaliths are huge stones erected by Neolithic people. Gobekli Tepe is a recent discovery that's changing the way we look at prehistory. The Stone Age is divided into three parts. The Paleolithic, the Mesolithic, and the Neolithic. Now, if you remember from lesson one, the word lith means stone. And the prefixes paleo, meso, and neo mean early, middle, and new. Now, the Paleolithic, we had two stone tools, but not farming. Dogs were our only domesticated animals. The earth was in an ice age. We shared earth with at least two other human species. The Mesolithic was after the Ice Age. People made better tools, including bows and arrows, and they made pottery. In the Neolithic, people used farming. They mastered weaving. They experimented with metals. They domesticated pigs, chickens, cows, and many other animals. This lesson will focus on the Neolithic. When we'll start with the Neolithic Agricultural Revolution. A revolution, by definition, changes something. Before the agricultural revolution, how did we get our food? We hunted, fished, and gathered wild foods. After, we raised crops and tamed animals. Before, we were nomads that had to follow game animals or ripe plants. So, people kept shelters simple. When they moved, they had to abandon them or carry them. After, we settled into permanent villages so we could be close to our crops. We built crypts to bury our dead. We built great monuments. Before, we had few possessions. Everything had to be carried with the people or abandoned when they moved. After, we could accumulate new, many more things, and so we invented many more things. Neolithic people were the first genetic engineers. Once Neolithic people began farming, they naturally chose the plants with the largest fruits or grains. Since they always planted the largest seeds, eventually the plants grew and grew. After thousands of years, we have the plants that we enjoy eating today. Domestication of animals. The dog was domesticated during the Paleolithic, about 30,000 BC. For a long time, humans and dogs were together. They were both hunters. In the Neolithic Revolution, humans would domesticate many other animals. It started about 9,000 BC with pig domestication. About 8,000 BC, humans domesticated the cow, goat, and cat. Around 60,000 
around 6,000 BC came the chicken. The horse, camel, and duck would be domesticated later, during the historical era, about 4,000 BC. The bee and silk moth would also be domesticated. All of these dates are disputed. People were much better off in village life. They could store up enough food in the good times to get through the hard times. The domestication of wild plants happened independently in many areas, but it began in the Middle East. Check the links below to, to link to this video and this one and this one. Inventions. Pottery. Basketry. Woven cloth. Mortar and pestle for grinding grain. And advances in tool making. Neolithic people learned how to make tools better. Scientists can easily separate this age because the tools were so superior. A Mesolithic axe, for example, is chipped around the edges, but a Neolithic axe is chipped and then polished. It took a lot more work, but they lasted much longer. Neolithic people also made a wider variety of tools. This film here, uh, the Battle of the Flint Axes, Mesolithic versus Neolithic, uh, quite remarkably demonstrates this. Megaliths and other architecture. The megaliths were large standing stones erected by Neolithic peoples. We don't know exactly why they did this, if it was to mark their territory or if it was part of some religious ceremony. This map on the left shows just the hinges and stone circles in Britain. As you see in the upper right, a hinge is an earthwork and a stone circle is a circle of stone. In addition, there are also barrows, lone standing stones, and cyst burials, kind of crypts in the ground. There are several good films about uh, the ancient stone monuments and buildings of the Neolithic period. They're all quite short. Take a look at them. The Iceman. Now we're going to talk about the two recent finds, historically, that have changed our opinions about Neolithic people. In 1991, a discovery changed modern views of Neolithic peoples. A corpse was found frozen in the Alps, a man that had died between 3350 and 3300 BC. His body was well preserved by the glacier. Up until this time, only people's bones and stone tools had been found, but now we could examine leather, fur, and wooden items. His equipment had 18 different types of wood. We could even examine his health and the contents of his stomach. He was about 45 and had worked hard all his life. He had tattoos and a uh, haircut. Good film on it. Here's another one. Gobekli Tepe. In 1994, another great discovery took place when a shepherd stumbled upon some strange rocks. When they excavated, a strange temple was revealed unlike anything historians had ever seen before. It's called Gobekli Tepe. Before 1994, Kids were taught that organized society began with Egypt and the Stone Age and the Stonehenge. That was between 3000 and 2500 BC. When the temple complex of Gobekli Tepe was discovered, it pushed organized societies back thousands of years. And so, watch a couple short films about it. Finally, human migration. 
Humans spread all over the globe except Antarctica. The earliest humans lived in East Africa. Migrations led out of Africa to the Middle East and Turkey, and then into India and Australia. Then came Europe and finally, North and South America, the New World. A couple of very quick films animated showing this spread of human migration. Historians consider the Neolithic age to have ended when people began writing and using metal. 